I think that I think there's a couple of things. I number one, I find it. Um, I thought that they would lose the titles when when they tried to like trademark them. I thought number one, they they lose the titles then. Number two, they always said, "Oh, we're not interested in any of the titles or anything like that," but they still use them constantly. Number three, I think, and you know, Sean, you're probably more attuned to this than me, but I feel like Prince Charles, because of his age, feels that you don't strip people of titles. Well, she hasn't been dropped. Um, that that could that would last. You, you would see it in in the trades an hour after it happened. So she hasn't been dropped. I think that they think that there's still, you know, big money that they can make. But also, I think that they look at it as a brand and somebody that okay, well, maybe we're not going to make a ton of money off of her. But at the same time, you know, we can say that we represent Meghan Markle, and they look at it like that. I believe, I believe that the kids are real. I believe the kids are real. Um, I've never really focused on the the birth certificate stuff. I mean, it's that is. I mean, obviously, you guys have dug into it quite a lot, but I just I've never really focused on the the birth certificate stuff. Well, I mean, it's both because. If you think about it, you're not making that much on Deal or No Deal, right? But it's a, it was a national television show. What most of those models do is they use it as a stepping stone to find somebody rich to marry. It's, it's it is. I think she was always looking for the next step up and the next bit of fame. And you know, I think that every、um, Deal or No Deal briefcase model is hoping to be the next Chrissy Teigen, right? So hey, you know, she、oh, yeah. she turned that into being with John Legend. Hope you're enjoying our podcast. Here's a word from a sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN has got the best VPN deal in the market. Enjoy the most affordable online protection for just one dollar seventy per month, plus six months extra with a thirty-day money-back guarantee. Unlock your favorite content from all over the world. Can't access Friends or other legendary shows on your Netflix while being abroad? That's not a problem anymore. Atlas VPN got you covered. Check out the Savile stuff on Netflix. Keep your Google searches in private. Looking for something on Google with Atlas VPN, you can search the web with real and organic search results, and do it without tracking your activity. Sick of the ads and malware? This is more than just a VPN. It blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers, and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Get away, hackers! Save some coins while shopping online. Get the best deals while shopping online, including online subscriptions. Netflix, Spotify, airlines, hotels, and much more, and protect unlimited devices. Atlas VPN protects all your devices with just a single subscription. Link is in the description box. If you're watching this on YouTube, enjoy the Christmas discount now because Atlas VPN Premium is just one dollar seventy per month plus six months extra with a thirty-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the description box below. Be quick; it is a limited-time offer. Thanks for watching. Back to the podcast. All right. Huge thank you to Paula M for. Arranging this interview with NT Lawyer and for Ron Swanson as well. I've just watched NT Lawyer's interview on Paula's channel. Link in the description box. So please go down and support Paula's work and subscribe to her channel. And NT has been on a very long journey, blogging almost two decades ago to where he is now, getting massive attention for his stories. And on his Twitter, he described himself as a three hundred pound. Entertainment lawyer who has been married six times, lives in his parents' basement, and has an obsession with digging up celebrity dirt. So huge thank you, Paula, and huge thank you, NT, for spending time with us this evening. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I've got tons of questions have come in from the viewers. Paula suggested we put a poll up, and、um, it's got a lot of interest. And A lot of it revolves around Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, which we're going to get to. But before we go there, Enti, are you okay just to give the viewers a little bit of your background and what led up to your, where you are today, please? Sure. You know, I <clears throat> I was at work and I was literally bored one day, and 
basically had a friend who was blogging and on Blogspot, and I said, you know, I I tell a couple of stories about things that had happened, um, and just you know was writing, and I didn't expect it to go anywhere. I literally was just, I just want to see how this blogging thing works and everything because at that time blogspot and blogging was the was the big thing and i just i kind of wanted to to try it and you know it was just basically <clears throat> what people did they talked about their life and i i just kind of did that for a couple of weeks and then i had a post blow up and and i was just it, it kind of freaked me out at first because the the post that blew up and i was just like okay well i was just kind of doing this for for fun and and then when that kind of blew up, I was like, OK, well, um, I guess I'll just keep going. And, you know, I did like five. I used to do just one post a day at 920 in the morning or something Pacific time. And then that kind of evolved into like five days a week and then more posts. And then I think starting in October of 2011, I've blogged every single day without a day off since October 2011. Wow. And as you've you know got this massive following over the years as it's developed you were you know a single guy not with this big massive legal department i imagine you must have had some major challenges and some of them have come from perhaps lawsuits from people yeah i mean i've only had one lawsuit and I, most of the time honestly you just get um <clears throat> letters from people if you go back in time then this was kind of what turned me the the entertainment industry and where I really had a problem with it was back in the day when I first started, I think that they thought I would be like every other blogger that I would be, Oh, you know, would you like to go to this premiere? Would you like to do this or whatever? And I remember at the beginning, I got so many invitations to go to things and I would just pass things out to all my readers. And if they wanted to, they could write something about being in it and I would post it and it was great. And then what they finally started to realize was that, I was not saying kind things other than, you know, if somebody, you know, gave tickets or whatever, somebody would write a review. Um, but I wasn't saying anything nice. And all of a sudden, all of these, you know, invitations and stuff just abruptly stopped. Like I used to get dozens and dozens per week. And then when they realized that I wasn't going to, you know, bend over, or be like People Magazine and just be nice, then they they stopped. And it was I, I remember specifically that it was a movie that had Method Man and Mary Kate Olsen and somebody else and um, Olivia Thurlby, that was her name. And Olivia Thurlby's people were like, well, there can't be anybody from, you know, Crazy Days and Nights here. We're not going to do the, the press junket and stuff like that. And, you know, I used to get in fights with publicists and eventually they just kind of gave up. So there are lawyers that, you know, there are celebrities that will have lawyers send out things on a pretty regular basis but it's just like hey can you just take this down or i'll have celebrities who'll reach out and say look you know i don't remember this happening it probably did it maybe did but can you just go ahead and take it down and honestly if it's you know a week earlier two weeks earlier three weeks whatever i'll take it down i don't care it doesn't bother me uh so i've i've managed to to not tick off too many people too extremely and, and there's certain subjects you know i don't talk about people's kids I don't, you know, talk about people who are not celebrities, who are not public figures. If a celebrity is married to a regular person, I don't talk about the regular person. I just talk about the celebrities. And so there's, I just, you know, certain things are off limits. I don't out people. Um, I just, you know, there's certain kind of unwritten rules that I play by. Are there any particular celebrities, legal departments you've had to become acutely aware of? Well, yeah, I, I you know, Mariah Carey's one. Um, there was a time back in the day, um, like Vanessa Hudgens, because she had the whole naked photo scandal and they were really on top of things. And so there was a little back and forth sometimes about them. But for the most part, it's there's there's nothing really. It, it, you'd be surprised. I probably get, you know, a letter every three or four months. What I've noticed lately that's really kind of bugging me is this um it's a copyright shakedown scam and this you know i used to have photos on the site all the time and i had a license from wire image and but what they'll do is and there's a statute of limitations for a year on a copyright photo and i've and i've 
I've noticed is there's a couple of law firms that basically anybody who has any kind of photo on a blog, they will just say, this is in violation of a copyright, but if you pay us $2,500, it'll go away. And, and I, I go online and I see these, you know, these bloggers who don't necessarily even know the law or anything like that. And they're using images that they posted three or four years ago and the statute of limitations is expired, but these law firms are just shaking them down for money. And I, I just, I, and it's not just one law firm. It's like this whole gang of them have just decided to go after innocent kind of bloggers who, Hey, I found this photo online and I posted it to my blog three years ago because it went with the article I was writing. And the next thing you know, they get some letter from an attorney who's bought the rights to, to certain photos and photo agencies and they shake them down. And I, I really find that uh, despicable. And I, I haven't really talked about it at all, but I just, and they're, they, they're always old ones. It's, it's kind of like a bill collector going after somebody's debt that's long expired. And, you know, they're just hoping that somebody, you know, gives them some money for this debt they bought, you know, for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, that's why I'm using AI to do my thumbnails these days. So viewers, thank you for sending in all these questions. And if you want to support NT Lawyer, all of his links are in the description box below this video. I'm going to bring Paula in now, though. Uh, Paula's probably got tons of questions as well. And uh, thanks, Paula. What, what would you like to start with? Well, thank you, Enti. Always, I'm a big fan. You know, you have no idea. Well, I'm sure you do. After we did that interview, so many people were coming with questions about all kinds of people. You know, uh, I gotta tell you, I have amazing subscribers because this morning I woke up and it's like, it's it's uh, what's his name, uh, Tyler Perry scandal, and it's because you know Tyler Perry is, is yeah, really bed's godfather. So I actually did a video this morning about wondering whether <laughs> Megan was gonna markle um tyler perry because i actually did a video when the netflix thing came out about what if tyler perry fi suddenly finds himself in a pickle how quick would Meghan markle how quickly would Meghan markle dump him and uh the pickle is here so a lot of people are asking me if first oh this is a big one and i think you know this now to confirm how Harry and Meghan really met because i, I know you've heard that they've given many stories and two what do you think Meghan Markle is going to do if this these accusations turn out to be true? Well, Tyler Perry does, you know, give them his jet often. And I think that they would cut and run. I think that they would cut and run with everybody, just like you and I talked about before. You know, I think that, you know, they, they see the, the trouble with Omid. And I think that Omid's going to turn on them. And, you know, these these allegations against Tyler Perry from Christian Keys, I mean, he... He talked about, you know, this alleged sexual harassment that he's dealt with. And he said that, you know, the person offered him $100,000. And, you know, it just I, I think that if if Tyler Perry were to be exposed like that, then Meghan and Harry would cut him off in a second. I, I, I this week I've been just all in the um, Archwell kind of digging around and stuff. And I, I really find that they don't have a lot of supporters if you think about it financially at least with archwell and we only have reports going back to, to the end of 2022 but they had two people who donated that's it they that's it they had two people that donated money to them and and i i just i found that to be remarkable i think that the people who analyzed you know charitable trusts and charities and stuff for a living i they all found it remarkable that there's no fundraising method in place or anything it just appears to be almost like oh well we need to start a charitable foundation and they they got one big thing you know when they started it and since then but i just i find it unbelievable that with all these close friends and everything that they only had two people donate if supposedly they know all the wealthy and the powerful people and all this kind of stuff and they got two people literally two people to donate to them and so if you have people who are like loaning you private jets and stuff like that, and I, I found it also amazing how much money they spent on, you know, administrative costs and salaries and stuff like that. And compared to what they actually gave, and then they gave some money to some things like, oh, don't let technology, you know, abuse you or something like that. And I was like, okay, you gave a hundred thousand dollars to some kind of shady thing. I, I just, don't you think that with all of their supposedly rich and powerful friends that more than two people would give them money? <laughs> it stinks to high heaven. It's, it does. 
It does. And I just, I, that blew me away. And as far as, you know, how Harry and Meghan met, you know, the way that I've always been led to believe is that one, you know, when you and I briefly touched on it, Paula, but yeah. when, when Megan went to the UK and had the meeting with, um, I think she was a reporter then rather than a publicist and now she's a publicist, yeah. but you know, they were talking and Megan goes, do you know any rich, you know, single guys that you could set me up with? And I, you know, mentioned Ashley Cole was the one that she really yeah. was interested in, which would have been a huge disaster. But, you know, Harry was hanging around with a guy who, and I'm not going to say his name, but he was a guy who would arrange kind of yachting. And I use yachting in a very general kind of descriptive term for people who, you know, going back to the fifties and the sixties and like Grace Kelly and stuff would, you know, be in the Mediterranean and, and for certain <laughs> amounts of money would, you know, hang out on yachts with wealthy individuals. But it it now encompasses a lot of different things. It can be Instagram models going to Dubai and stuff like that. I, I use this. I use the term interchangeably. But you know, Harry had a friend who was in, who who would hook people up with you know other wealthy friends. It didn't mean that there was a exchange of money, but that's just what this guy did. And he built favors, or he you know was a middleman. You know, not necessarily a pimp, but he would just kind of arrange things and get repaid in different ways. And I think that. He's the one that made the arrangement for for Harry to to meet Megan because Megan had some friends like Jessica Maroney who who knew him and stuff like that. And I think that that's how it came to be. And I think that Megan was like, Harry, all right, you know, and just kind of like just sunk it in. And the whole story about her not knowing anything about the royal family and, oh, I had to Google Prince Harry and stuff like that. I mean, it's such obvious lies that it's just it's. And then because you see pictures of her as a youngster, like in front of Buckingham Palace and stuff, and she's there's no way that she didn't know about Prince Harry and stuff. And it's just that whole story about having to Google. And I just I always found that, you know, uh, I just remarkable in the audacity to, to say something like that. What do you think would motivate her to say something like that? Then is it like a superiority complex? Is she just looking down on the masses thinking they'll believe any old BS? I spew out i think it was because she didn't want to be seen as like a gold digger or something like that because at that point we didn't know the the story of of the publicist slash reporter or whatever we hadn't heard that version of how megan had been you know searching for rich single famous guys in in england and then if you go back and you look and I, i'm not going to remember her name she's she's like a reality star and stuff who was in england and she was friends with megan and uh, they Chelsea would always talk and they would hang out and, you know, have glasses of wine. Yeah. Thank you. And and then, you know, all of a sudden, oh, I'm with Harry. I can't be friends with you anymore because now I've reached a, a different kind of social status or something. Not forgetting, you know, remembering that she was, you know, a briefcase model and then had like I always like to point out, you know, she decided that she wanted to do serious acting, which is why she didn't want to do deal or no deal. And then she did the oral scene on Beverly Hills 90210. Um, because I guess that was serious acting. Yeah. I mean, but she did 34 episodes of Deal of North Deal. You would think that after one episode, you would feel objectified enough to not to say, you know what, this is not for me. Instead of doing it, I think 34 times, I think it was that she did that. But, you know, I mean, uh, and um, yeah, because she needed the money. It's it's kind of odd. Do you think it's really the money? Because she was with Trevor Engelson and her father gave her stuff. You know, so she wasn't really like one of those, I think, I think anyways, uh, one of those really struggling actresses, you know, or, or actors that you see them waitering tables and, you know, they don't, they don't have, but she was living with Trevor Engelson and, and her father was giving her money and car, you know, and, and helping her get auditions. And I mean, what do you think? I mean, does it really just the money or do you think it's fame? Well, I mean, it's both because if you think about it, you're not making that much on Deal or No Deal, right? But it's a, it was a national television show. It was on NBC. It was a network. Um, you're there. You're, you know, the select thing. And you could use that as a stepping stone. But what most of those models do is they use it as a stepping stone to find somebody rich to marry. Yeah. I mean, that's generally the case. It's very rare that any of them go on to other things. There are success stories. Don't get me wrong. But they're very few and far between considering how many there have been. And I just, 
so you get on she hadn't been on network television like that where you're on every single week on an extremely highly rated program yes you don't get much time on on air and you're hoping that you know you're gonna be able to you know have the million dollar one or you're gonna get some kind of extra screen time uh each week yeah so she was living with somebody but and her dad was giving her money but los angeles is an extremely expensive place to be and you know you're always having to you know do things and you're always having to to go out and you're always having to network and stuff and it's it's it is i think she was always looking for the next step up and the next bit of fame and you know i think that every um deal or no deal briefcase model is hoping to be the next chrissy Teigen, right so hey you know she oh, yeah, she turned that it. into being with john legend <laughs> the hierarchy here in the uk beyond wealth and fame and that's the hierarchy of titles yeah. which she has tapped into which leads to this question from one of the viewers oi oi 6460 has said why does nt think harry and megan have not been stripped of their titles does he think they may have some real dirt on the royal family and if so what could that be i think that i think there's a couple of things i number one i find it um I thought that they would lose the titles when, when they no, tried no. to like trademark them. I thought number one, they they lose the titles then. Number two, they always said, "Oh, we're not interested in any of the titles or anything like that," but they still use them constantly. Number three, I think, and you know, Sean, you're probably more attuned to this than me, but I feel like Prince Charles, because of his age, feels that you don't strip people of titles. It's kind of like, okay, you know, we're not going to kick Andrew completely out. It's just not something, it's too unseemly or something like that. I, 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 that's kind of always been my feeling. I do know, obviously, that they must have dirt and they have shown no unwillingness to, to not, you know, Wait. use it. Whether it's, you know, leaks about Andrew or leaks about William, or leaks about Kate, whatever it is, they will do that. The whole, you know, the the racist thing with with Kate and Charles. I mean, they've had this kind of thing, but I just it comes down to I, I kind of feel like Charles is just so old school that he just won't strip somebody of their titles. I don't know, Sean. I think you're probably more attuned to that than than I would be because it's just something that you deal with on a daily basis. It does make sense. I mean, beyond royal protocol, you know, if it's your own son, isn't it? And they say blood is thicker than water, so you would keep that olive branch set up in case his relationship does ever, you know, get shipwrecked so he can, could come back into the royal fold. What do you think, Paula? I think Charles is a wimp. You know, I, everybody who knows my channel, you know, I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I call it out. I, I'm just sad the queen is gone, really, because, uh, I, I mean, the queen was pretty, pretty, you know, recollections may vary, was one of the most beautiful, most diplomatic phrases I've ever heard in my life. And I worked a lot, a long time in diplomacy. And I mean, recollections may vary. It's, it's such a perfect thing. You know, it's like, you're a liar. You're a big fat liar kind of thing. But, you know, it's like she can't be sued for that, for that phrase, you know? Uh, so I, but I think that Charles, I agree with you, Anthony, in many things, because the royal family, Charles is from a time I think he doesn't even own a mobile phone. So Charles is from a time where the royal family controlled the press. You know, if if there was news, I remember I I read anyways when the Duke of Windsor was dating Wallace Simpson, um, that it was all known in the United States, but there was complete censorship in the UK, and it was like a massive shock. And I was actually quite surprised then to hear when when Piers Morgan said the names of. Charles and Catherine, I saw Dickie Arbiter sitting there. It's like, how dare you? It's like, they're still thinking censorship in the UK. They still don't understand that the internet exists. I, I don't know. So to me, I think Charles think that he can still control the press and people can be censored or, or things cannot be known. So I think he doesn't realize that it, literally, we all know this, even I, that I'm not technically proficient. You, you take a picture here and you put it in the internet, it's worldwide. You can't control the narrative the way they used to. So I think that's one of their biggest pitfalls that they have. 
and allowing Harry and Meghan Markle to run with this without being, con I don't mean to put, you know, tit for tat, but there are certain things that matter like the Commonwealth, you know, he's the head of the, the he's the head of state of the Commonwealth and, and, and in many realms, Canada, one of them, I'm Canadian. And people, you know, there's the crazies out there there's, that believe Meghan Markle's narrative. And I mean, I, I think Charles, yeah, I don't think he'll do anything because he's a wimp. I think he should, he should really think of, I don't know. I, I mean, and I think it's affecting William you know, and, and I mean, he can only use William so much, you know, William can only lift the monarchy so much if it's been undone. What he does with one hand, he takes away with the other, but that's just my opinion. I mean, but yeah. So on NC, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just one thing. I think, Sean, what you said, number one, if you have that olive branch, like let's say you strip the title, then does Harry ever want to come back, right? Is he able to ever come back and to reinstate the titles? Because I get the, you know, it's just like a gut feeling. I really, I don't think that the marriage is forever. I think that Harry is homesick a great deal of time. And as I've said before, he just sits at home alone. He doesn't really have any friends. And I think that at some point he's going to say, you know, I want to go back at least and do some things. And, you know, obviously if he had the title. And I also think what you said, Paula, you know, going back to the queen, the queen at first was a little bit slow in the uptake against Andrew, but at some point she just said, you know, enough is enough and really kind of went after Andrew. And it's only when Charles was elevated that all of a sudden Andrew's kind of back into the fold a little bit, you know, Eugenie and Beatrice kind of get back in the fold a little bit, you know, maybe they're going to get paid. And so Charles kind of, you know, back down what, what the queen had kind of started and just kind of reversed it all. And I, I agree that, you know, he, he is a wimp about it. And, but at the same time, like Sean said, you know, blood is thicker than water. And maybe he's hoping for that reconciliation with his son. And he knows that if he strips the titles, that that reconciliation is going to be a lot harder to accomplish. Yeah. I think we've got to consider what his value system is. What does he truly care about? Because you saw with Diana, how the media went against him. But it was like he didn't really care. He just wanted to kick back with Camilla, live happily ever after. Um, he's a complex character, and I don't think he operates as we um, mere mortals operate in his, in his brain. Uh, you, you've seen that over the years, the way he's behaved. So I think they should have just passed it on to William. I think it, it was a big mistake giving it to giving it to Charles because he's he is. Um, Unpredictable. Anyway, we've got another question that's come in from Fred Bloggs. Um, does NT think that Harry is being coercively controlled by Meghan? Okay, this is how I, I think it is. <clears throat> is that she has progressively isolated him. Okay, so, you know, they're together. She's in Toronto. He's in England. It's all new. It's all fresh. They're like secret and, oh, let's, you know, in this just lovers kind of thing. And so he's really excited about that. And so let's say they start married life and they're in England and he's still surrounded by his friends. He's still surrounded by his family. He's still surrounded by a lot of comfortable things that he has known for his entire life. And she senses that, okay, I'm maybe losing him. I don't have enough of him. He's being pulled in too many different directions. And she's been working with him. You know, she's been saying, look, we should do this. We should do that. We should do this. And then she says, you know what we need to do is we need to take a step back. So let's go to Canada and we're going to go to Vancouver Island. And you don't know anybody there. You're going to be, you know, but it's still a Commonwealth country. So, you know, you can still we can. She comes up with kind of spin and, you know, you can still work from there. And it's part of the Commonwealth and we can do some things there and in Vancouver. And they've they've tried to do some some stuff with organizations in Vancouver. But then she's like, OK, I really I just need to make this even more. Plus, I have this thirst to be famous. I have this thirst to be a producer. I have this thirst to be this A plus list star that I've always wanted to be. And I can't do that in this Russian oligarch's house on Vancouver Island. So we need to move down to Southern California. So they move down to Southern California and they move to Montecito, which is a very small town. And. She's isolated him even further. They're in a house. They're they're not doing anything. And you could kind of sense how uncomfortable he was at times, especially 
and the early days of the pandemic and just kind of felt like he was just doing exactly what she wanted to do. And let's go visit this house. Oh, that didn't work out. Well, we need better film. We need better stuff. And you'll also notice that when she has these quote unquote paparazzi photos, which are all planned and staged, that a lot of the times it's just her. It's not, you know, Harry's never going on these walks with her. Yeah, there was the thing like at Halloween or whatever, but but let's just say like when she goes with her friends and everything and she's perfectly made up and and you can tell she hasn't even told her friends that the paparazzi are going to be there because they're all just dressed kind of like normally for a hike and she looks like something out of, you know, Town and Country magazine. And <laughs> then... So, and it, Harry's never happy. She says, okay, well, you got to go with me to this concert. He looks miserable. You got to go with me to this other concert. He looks miserable. So she goes for a second night. He goes, I'm not going. The only time, and I've said this, you know, I said it to Paul, I said it all the time. The only time he's ever looked happy is when he was on his polo trip with Nacho. That's the only time that he's ever, ever looked happy in however many years that he's been in, in Canada and the U.S. He never smiles. It looks like it's a pain. Um, I, I take that back. When he's at the Invictus Games, he looks happy too, um, Without because that's kind of his thing. And so I, I think, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> I think that he looked more in his, and 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 in that situation, it was Megan who looked really uncomfortable and awkward and was trying to make sure that she could be there. And she's always setting up things like the Kevin Costner thing, where she tries to interject herself yeah. into it and say, "Well, this is what you should be doing," kind of thing, and just. It's just so uncomfortable to watch. Anytime that they are together, it is it, it's it, it's extremely uncomfortable to watch. And I just can't imagine how happy he is. And and he's like, oh well, you know, I want to, I'm, you know, I'll sue these people and everything like that. I don't think that he even really wants to be part of those lawsuits. I think it's just, you know, if Megan wants him to be part of the lawsuits, or maybe Elton John wanted him to be a part of it. I don't know, but I don't think he's. I don't think he thinks independently at all. I think Megan has him firmly under her thumb. And when she becomes this A plus list thing that she thinks that she's going to be, or comes up with a whole bunch of her own money, I, I think you're going to find Harry even more marginalized and he's just going to want to go back to something that's familiar and he's going to go back to the UK. So what do you think the glue is that's still holding it together from Harry's side then? Is it having family is it um, he doesn't want to be proven wrong? I mean, there's got to be a point where he gets so exasperated that he just thinks, oh, you know, I've only got one life. Am I going to spend the rest of my life in this situation? Or am I going to bail and, and, and live again? So what, what factors would you say, NT, that are um, outweighing that decision right now? I think what you just said, I think family. I think that the sense that he doesn't want to be proven wrong. He doesn't want people to say, ah, I told you so. And and I'm sure that there is a bunch of pressure on Megan uh, from Megan to no, you need to stay here. No, you don't need to go on this trip. No, you don't need to do that. You know, it's always it's it's generally they're always together. I don't know how much he had to beg and to cajole and to whatever to go on his polo trip. I, I'm sure that, you know, but you could just I mean, you could just see the joy on his face to have escaped from Megan and to be free and to do what he wanted. And at the same time, I thought that Megan looked happy because she didn't have to, you know, kind of try and figure out something to do. And she did that whole awkward thing at in and out which this is the other ridiculous, you know, story of hers is that, oh, we went to the in and out drive through line and they know exactly who we are and what we order. Okay, that is the biggest crock ever. I used to go to the same in and out all the time, three days a week, four days a week. And um, <laughs> I, they don't remember. They get 25,000 people at every single in and out location. It, the, they don't know. And so for her to say, oh, they recognize my voice. No, they don't. And and anybody who lives in Southern California or now because there's in and outs, you know, a lot of other places. But anybody who lives in Southern California knows that that was just a straight up lie that nobody in in and out is going to remember anybody's order because they take 6 million of them a day. Over to Paula. Yeah, no, I wanted to ask you about that because this is one of the things that many people have asked me. It's a recurring question. If people know that this woman is straight up lying, why isn't the mainstream media calling her out? And how influential, how, how pivotal was Oprah in this whole thing of, of maybe was she part of the plan for Meghan Markle at the beginning? Is she still 
part of that plan? I mean, because, I mean, she was heavily invested with Gail King. So, I mean, I mean, do you think, I mean, I, mean, I, I think something's going to come out with Oprah because Oprah's under fire for lying about Ozempic, so. Hey, we hope you're enjoying the podcast. It's a word from our sponsor, Shady Rays, and it is the season of giving. Get the perfect gift for that special somebody, yourself or both. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades and quick swap snow goggles that won't break the bank. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers an unrivaled product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and world-class optics for all outdoor adventures. And Jen's blonde locks aren't getting tangled. In the tangle-free nose piece, so I can put it up in my hair like this. <laughs> No catching. <laughs> With an extensive array of styles and colours, you're bound to find the perfect pair of Shady Rays sunglasses. And if you're into winter sports, their quick swap snow lenses move effortlessly between full sun to low light environments. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost or broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out a very merry deal for the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use the code SHAUN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over a quarter million people. That's ShadyRays.com, Sean, SHAUN for 50% off or two more pairs of polarized sunglasses link in the description box if you're watching this on youtube thanks for supporting our sponsor back to the podcast cheers yeah i mean that was ridiculous of oprah by the way i mean it was ridiculous even when she called it out because if she did the whole slim fast thing which was a shortcut anyway so i mean what it just that's nuts and so yeah she finally had the pressure i don't think that megan and oprah are necessarily as connected as they once were i, I think that it's I don't think that they have that connection. But the reason people don't call out Megan for the the lies or whatever on it is simply because they don't want to be accused of being racist. And it's not being racist to call out somebody for for lying about an in and out order. It's not, you know, racist to to call somebody out about how they possibly met. It's not you know, it's it's not that at all. It's just and the way I've always looked at this is that I've just looked at it as any other kind of celebrity who's trying to, um, you know, social climb. And it could be male, female, it could be it could be white, it could be a person of color. It doesn't matter. It happens in Hollywood all the time. Um, I'm just saying like and I think they go. So the media is like it's obvious like like this or and they won't call out the setups. They won't call out the fact that it was a setup that her photo was taken at the in and out. OK. Who is standing in line at an in and out and the, the drive through? You have to be in a very specific place in, in and out to see the drive through window. It's a very difficult kind of angle to do. And Megan has her window rolled down. She's got a full on smile. She's looking directly at the camera. So who is this person that happened to be in the in and out in the exact same? The only place that you could see it had their phone out, had the camera ready to go had it just so they knew that she was going to, you know, pull up or whatever it's it. And, and I think that for whatever reason, the whole behind the scenes kind of what's done with paparazzi photos and the arrangements that everybody makes, it just doesn't sway everything. Like if people magazine published the in and out photo or us weekly, go stars are just like us, you know, Megan Markle and in and out. And they don't take the time to say, okay, well, this was obviously a setup job and, you know, the quotes and everything. And they just, I, I think that they just don't want to rock the boat and they just want to, you know, for whatever reason, just get along to go along. And it goes back to what I said at the very beginning when we started talking is that I refused to get along to go along because I, I didn't want to only say what the publicist and the studios and the producers wanted me to say in exchange for tickets. That's the same reason that nobody calls out Tom Cruise for being a Scientologist and for doing all the horrible things that he's done is because everybody in the tabloids can't wait to get invited to a movie set. They can't wait to get invited to a premiere. They can't wait to shake Tom Cruise's hand and take a selfie. It's the same thing. It has nothing to do with Meghan Markle or it, it's, it's all about access and all these people want to feel important. And the way they feel important is to be around famous people.
Yeah. You talked the last time in my interview, you did about, we talked about WME and our area manual. Um, and people were asking, um, uh, given everything that's happened recently um, in Ari Emanuel, you know, he hasn't been able to get very much for her. And we talked about that the only thing she has going for her is the Meet Me at the Lake that Netflix bought. It's not she because people think that she bought it. And I said, no, am, am I wrong with this? It was it Netflix who bought the rights to Meet Me at the Lake and they're allowing her to. Yeah, Netflix. Okay. Yeah. No, she, you know, Netflix bought it. And the other thing is that what she did recently is she did the um, the thing with the the director of the after. Yeah, like yeah, Miss you know, Miss Hart, short Mr. film, and she did in Montecito. Is that the Q and A she did for Netflix with Miss Sam Harriman, who directed this? Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the after. Yeah, that she- exactly. That's what it was. But the re the reason she did that was because she wants to be seen as this producer extraordinaire, this person where. Oh, you know, let me be the moderator for this kind of thing. And it just that's what people do. Like, you know, Steven Spielberg will have some kind of showing for his friend or something to get some attention. And, you know, he'll do like a little moderator thing. It's just that's the kind of thing. And so she thinks that's what she needs to do. And to be seen as like this high powered kind of film executive producer extraordinaire. I'm telling you that she will not stop until she gets to go up on the academy you know oscars and and tries to win best picture that's what she wants to do she wants to be the producer that's who goes up you know to get the best picture and that's what she, you know that's what she's desperate to do and i think that you know she thought that you know the documentary would win some awards or something like that i mean i've talked before harry you know didn't get nominated for for best audio recording for a grammy so it shows that people are like you know, normally in a best-selling book by somebody who is, you know, as, as famous as Prince Harry and who narrates their own book, they would get a Grammy nomination. I mean, that's just the way it goes because people are looking at the list and they go, oh, yeah, they don't remember the names of books. They just don't. And so when they're doing it for the Grammys, especially, they're just going down and looking at famous people's names and biographies and people who recorded, if you go back and you look, that's how politicians generally get their Grammy awards is because they've written some book, but somebody's just going down the list and they go, Oh, Prince Harry. Okay. Yeah. I'll nominate him. So the fact that he didn't get nominated just speaks volumes to, to how much Hollywood isn't all that interested in him. Yeah. So just adding on to what you said though. So Samantha Markle says that Megan is not going to stop until she's a billionaire president of America. Do you think she has a game plan, a bigger game plan outside of her present genre? I thought so at first. She had a bunch of meetings with Gavin Newsom because we knew Diane Feinstein was going to die. Oh, and okay. one of the things was <laughs> that she had a bunch of meetings with Gavin Newsom and you know the governor gets to appoint somebody to fill out the rest of the term. And Diane Feinstein's term, you know, is scheduled to end in 2024. Was and then And part of the the issue was, I think that Megan, I think, really wanted it. But at the same time, I think she was kind of wishy-washy about it because she didn't want to be scrutinized in Washington, D.C. every day. Yes, it would give her a platform. And I know she didn't ever want to run for any kind of office. I don't think she wants to run for any office. But this was going to be perfect for her because she was just going to be appointed. It was going to be a short amount of time. The person, you know, who agreed to it also had to agree to not run again that was kind of part of the deal and so i think that she was in the very short running for it i I, she had enough meetings she could you know get the 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 whole getty family who's behind gavin newsom and stuff like that they are you know fans of of megan she had met with one of the gettys and there was the rumor of course with with the older getty i'm not so sure that that was true um (laughs) But the younger Gettys, she was definitely meeting with them. She was definitely meeting with the younger Gettys, who are the financial backers behind Gavin Newsom. And I think that it was hers if she really showed that she wanted to do it. But I don't think that she could decide between Hollywood and and that. And I think that she thought she would come under too much scrutiny and that there would be too many people in like the, the Senate office who would talk about her and what she didn't do or she didn't show up to work on time or she wasn't knowledgeable about things, or she didn't study, or she didn't work. And I think she realized that the negatives would probably outweigh any kind of positive um, publicity that she could get for it. 
and just ultimately said that it wasn't for her. But I think if she had really, really wanted it, that it was hers. Wow. That's how influential she is because I, I'm, I'm surprised because she goes by the Duchess of Sussex titles. And in the United States, you can be part of a government office using a title. So I'm surprised that they would, I mean, they, she can't be, she can't be a representative of the United States. Use, I mean, using a royal title of a foreign country. Well, yeah. I, so I'm surprised that there's still, for example, in the Archwell, you said that you've been going through the Archwell thing, right? You see that in, and I think in her pages, she goes yeah. that names herself as Megan the Duchess of Sussex, which is quite shocking because in all government government uh, documents, you have to use your, you know, your 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 ID name. And I don't think she she's unless she's changed her name to Megan and her last name, the Duchess of Sussex. I mean, I'm, I was surprised to see that, you know. Because well, her driver's license. Her, go for it. Her, her driver's license says Megan Markle. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, because the United States does not recognize titles. Yes. Okay. I mean, it's just something that, you know, in a newspaper article or whatever, I mean, there have been plenty of former politicians who have been given titles. Um, I can think after, you know, the, the Gulf War and stuff there, you know, um, Schwarzkopf got a title and I mean, they get titles, but they're just not allowed to use them as, you know, it's just an honorific, but when they're in England or whatever, then they're addressed by that title. So, yes, she would have been Senator Meghan Markle or, you know, whatever. But she still would have been probably using Duchess of Sussex for her private correspondence or whatever. It, you know, but yes, technically, you know, you're not supposed to be addressed by that. They're not going to put it on any kind of government document. I mean, if we want to go really like old school, like um, Luann Lessons. <laughs> From from Real Housewives, she was a countess for a while, but it didn't say countess on her driver's license. So, you know, I mean, it's just it's just something that you know you use. So, yes, she wouldn't have been able to call you know Duchess of Sussex, you know, the Honorable Senator from you know California, the Duchess of Sussex. It wouldn't have been you know that. You know, and talking about the the Archwell thing, you know that they charge fifty seven thousand dollars to office space, right? And they don't have offices. I mean, there was yeah. this reporter who did a whole thing, which was a big scandal, that he went to the offices. Uh, where, where is it? In Delaware or something like that? And there's nobody there. There's no offices. And yet they're claiming $57,000 on office space. I'm surprised the IRA is not, the IRS is not yeah. more involved in this. Well, the Delaware thing is just basically, you know, a lot of companies are incorporated, you know, in Delaware. But I think what, they were using as what they're calling office space and stuff like that is, is, you know, things for, you know, um, let's say the director, the guy who gets, uh, James Holt, who, who got paid $227,000. So if he uses a portion of his home for the office, uh -huh. then, you know, then that's a portion, you know, like, okay, well, you're using a portion of your, of your house for this office. So we're going to pay you a certain amount of money or any of these other staff, because, what do they have? They have five people, I think, or something like that. Yeah. So, um, so any of them that are, you know, having to, you know, rent space or use a portion of their home or have a dedicated phone line or whatever, that's what they're calling office expenses. I don't really have a problem with that part. I have a problem with the fact that, you know, that they paid $640,000 in salaries and other compensation and another 786,000 on, on expenses. So basically, you know, they had $2.6 million in expenses and they only took in 2 million bucks from the two people. So they lost $674,000 last year. There's no fundraising mechanism in place or anything like that. They don't have any programs. The foundations spend a great deal of their money trying to raise other money. That's just yeah. kind of what they do. Yeah. And, you know, it looks bad when you lose $674,000. It shows that you're not really into this whole Archwell thing. And you're really into doing your other stuff, which is being a movie producer, but you're going to keep this charity running. And every year we're going to get a story about how it didn't make any money. And they just, you know, basically just spending it all. So we've had a reoccurring question come in from several viewers, including Parody Patty and Tom oh. Taylor. And it is, there is a rumor going around that Harry and Meghan don't even live together. Is there any truth to this that Enti has heard through the grapevine? Okay. Megan and Harry 
they I mean, they still have the house in Montecito, but Megan is spending more and more time in Los Angeles. And so she has a place in Los Angeles because if anybody is driven between Montecito and Los Angeles, it is a very long way. It is, you know, it's a solid two hours. Probably it could be more depending on the time of day and everything like that. So you don't want to make this trip all the time. So I think that they spend more days apart from each other than they do together. Do we want to call that not living together? Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of people who, you know, live in New York City like during the week and then they only go home on the weekends because of the commute, like to Connecticut or something like that. But yeah, I feel as if they definitely spend more time apart than they do together. I feel whenever they are together, it is some kind of staged opportunity to be photographed together. And whenever they are together, they do that. I would say that they're probably more days than not that they're not together plus harry's got the place in 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 um in montecito that he stays at too that's separate i mean it's it's five minutes from well i don't know why you need a hotel room you know five minutes from your house um but he's got one so it is true that he has one because uh, somebody came up uh, some of the sussex squad or or some article in people magazine said that that was a lie that that he didn't have that, that you know that he just holds meetings there but you know uh so it is true that he has a place there okay (laughs) yeah holds meetings i mean i mean so yeah i mean he could say he holds meetings there but if you are permanently that is your you know place to hold meetings and then okay you know call it what then that gets into the whole semantics thing but yeah he's got a place there and you know she's got a place in la And maybe he holds meetings there. Maybe he goes there to do mushrooms. Maybe he goes there, you know, for for other reasons. Maybe he goes because he needs to to get away for, you know, a few minutes. I, 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 yeah, they they more time apart than together. Enti, there's a question that somebody, I actually heard this, but I don't know if it's true, that Meghan Markle is wrestling everybody to get an invite to the White House Christmas dinner. Is that true? I don't, I don't think that she would, I think that she would rather go to like the Met Gala than the White House Christmas dinner, because I don't, I, I, I don't see what the advantage is for her to go to the White House Christmas dinner. You know, it, you're just going to get one quick photo. Um, You know, you can't live stream it or anything like that. They'll just, you know, it's, it's pool photographers and stuff. I, I don't see the the benefit to her to, to go to the White House Christmas dinner. I think that she would rather go to, to the Met Ball and, you know, the she can meet with designers and fashion houses and people who can afford millions of dollars, not millions of dollars, sorry, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a table who then could either donate to Archwell or, or pay for an endorsement deal or something like that. The, the people who are going to the White House Christmas dinner for the most part for the most part, obviously there's some wealthy people that go, but she would have better luck with what she's trying to do to, to, to focus, to go to the Met ball rather than the white house Christmas dinner. You know, you touched on something about censorship that Harry's trying to pay. I, I, I saw something in Archibald that he gave over a hundred thousand pounds or something in Europe for a company to investigate social media uh, media platforms like YouTube, like influencers and stuff like that, and the impact, the negative impact that they have, that they want to be, uh, and they paid another hundred some thousand pounds to another company be- to see because they, they they want to be the ones who um, sponsor responsible, um, how do you say, um, press and truth and truthful press. It was- Sorry. No, and then he won part of the court case uh, where this court case is everybody knew he was hacked, but not as much. But um, but he won partially part of that court case. What do you think that's going to, I know, what do you think is going to happen with that? This, do you think that's going to feed his paranoia or his grandeur that he's beat the press and he's going to keep going at it? Well, he lost too. You know, he yeah. lost one, he won one. Um, I, I think that this is just, you know, the, the remnants from stuff that happened so long ago. And I think that he thinks he's more important and that people were hacking him. And, and I'm convinced that people weren't actually hacking him and that he just thinks that everybody was because he's a little bit paranoid about it. And, you know, you, 
whenever you win money from, you know, the fact that the the Mail on Sunday won actual money, like sixty five thousand dollars or something from Harry for for part of one of the cases just shows how, you know, he, he didn't he didn't have one. And even the the other one where he did get some some legal fees, uh, you know, it, it's it's a wash here. So I think that he was encouraged by Megan to, to go after them. And she knew that the libel laws were different in England. And it goes back to something that that Sean had said earlier. And, and you said to Paula is that whenever you want information from from in England, it's some kind of juicy story. You have to hope that some U.S. tabloid has seen something in the Irish mirror or, you know, where they didn't have a name and you want this name. And so you're hoping that somebody in the U.S. media has actually posted the name. And I think that Piers did the right thing. I think it's too often that we just that there is this kind of censorship and and none of these stories come out because they're so afraid of offending somebody and so afraid of getting sued in the U.K. and and these these long drawn out things. And it just it's so hard to to win. So the fact that Harry even lost part of it, I thought was really encouraging. And the fact that Piers was willing to, to say the names, I thought was really encouraging. And, you know, perhaps it will change some kind of tide. And there will be, I, I try to imagine, like when Prince Andrew was going to all these parties 25 years ago and 20 years ago, that if they had been able to actually publish that stuff, you know, then maybe he would have had a downfall. Maybe he would have been stripped of titles. Maybe he wouldn't have been able to, to bribe government officials and things like that. And to make all these crazy deals with countries, you know, I just, I feel like there's n that even if they knew about it, they were afraid to publish it and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Piers did that. I'm glad that maybe the, the walls are breaking. I'm glad that people like Harry at least lost part of the, the case and, and maybe they'll stop doing this. And maybe Harry will just realize, you know, this is just taking a bunch of my time. It's now taking a bunch of my money and there's just better things to do in life. We've got a question from Welly Girl, and it is, if Megan hasn't been dropped by WME, how do they take her forward? If she has been dropped, what does she do next? Well, she hasn't been dropped. Um, that that could that would last. You, you would see it in in the trades an hour after it happened. So she hasn't been dropped. I think that they think that they're still, you know, big money that they can make. But also, I think that they look at it as a brand and somebody that okay, well, maybe we're not going to make a ton of money off of her, but at the same time, you know, we can say that we represent Meghan Markle, and they look at it like that. Because a lot of times, you know, they'll have somebody who used to make a lot of money and doesn't make as much anymore. Let's go with Serena Williams, who's, you know, WME. And when she was, you know, playing all the time and doing a bunch of commercials and stuff like that, they were making millions of dollars. But now she's not playing. She still does commercials and stuff, but not as many. Yeah. She's not interested in it. But they still like the fact that they say that they can represent Serena Williams. And it's just kind of, you know, that figurehead at the top of a masthead, right? you know, some editor at large or something like that. So they like having those names in there. I think that this movie that she's making is not ever going to make a ton of money. Um, they've already, you know, but Netflix had to pay the, the money. I, I think that there is some money that they are making from it, but they're not going to make a bunch of money from her unless she signs some kind of deal like Dior or, you know, whatever, which is why I think like the Met Gala thing, if she, you know, they tried to make that Dior deal happen by like a fait accompli kind of saying, oh yeah, she's about to sign this deal with Dior. It's going to be like 10 or $15 million. If she did sign that kind of deal, then, you know, William Morris is going to get, you know, a million and a half bucks probably. So how much money are they actually spending on her? How much money are they having to invest? How much, you know, are the agents doing how much of, you know, is it cost effective for them? I, I don't think that the agents are necessarily making a bunch of calls on her behalf. I think that they're hoping that people call them and they're just fielding stuff. And I, I think that it'll last at least probably another year. Hmm. Wow. You know, I wanted to ask you something because I don't know if you know this. Um, I request that Archie's a copy of Archie's birth certificate. All children that are in the line of succession, all their details must be made public 
to show transparency because they occupy a constitutional role in the line of succession. So in 1948, the queen, um, the law, there was a law that the home, the home secretary had to be present when the child, a royal child was being born to certify that it came out of the woman's body. So they did away with that, but in, in exchange, they left it as protocol that the easel would be put outside and the, and the details would be made public to ensure transparency and that there was no doubt in people's mind that that child belonged in the line of succession. So many YouTubers, my, me included, we have tried to request a copy of the birth certificate for Archie and even his baptism certificate. And it has been, we get an answer saying that it's been sealed and that we're not allowed to have it. Even because uh, for the baptism certificate, they said that they don't want to show the godparents name. So we said, well, can you just, you know, redact them? And they still refuse that. And in regards to Lily, I, you know, that the pediatrician who Megan claims deliver her suddenly quit her practice, a very thriving practice, never to be heard from again. And I have requested in five occasions, not only me, but other YouTubers have requested a copy of the birth certificate. And every single time I have gotten back the message, you know, check your details that you, you submitted the correct details because there's no records of, of that child being born in California on that date with those names. And you know, then you don't get the money back because they, before you submit it, they ask you to, to review, right? I mean, what do you think is going on with that? Right. I don't know. You know, I know that Lilibet's right. They did have a copy of that one, right? That one, nope. like, as I, I've seen the only that one, think, right? No, the one because okay. Um, I I don't know. I, the only I do know that you know if you look at you know Kate and Williams' kids, I mean, those have all been made public. Yeah. But I don't know enough about the whole. Um, I, but that's because it's in England, right? So, I mean, it, you know, list their house as Kensington Palace. And I think Prince George's was one was typed and two were handwritten or something like that. And I remember, but I think it probably has to do with the fact that they, you know, that the kids were born in California in Santa Barbara. Well, Archie was born in the UK. I, I just, okay. I, okay. Okay. Sorry. So Lilibet's, that's why we've seen Lilibet's. Okay. Cause Lilibet's the Santa Barbara one. Um, but Archie, I don't know why it wouldn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like you said, if these in the line of succession, um, They're both there in the line because of succession. I know that they've made the other three public. Yeah. Um, you know, they, but they've made the other three public. So I don't know why they wouldn't do Archie's. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but I've never really, like I said, at the very beginning, I kind of stay away from kids and oh, I, yeah. I don't like to get into things about kids because I just find it makes it very sensitive when you're talking about other people's kids and then. Yeah. That's the biggest way to get somebody to come hammer you down. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting because I do know that they've made, you know, they made George's and everybody's public. So it would make sense that they would be willing to to make that one public. Have any UK reporters tried to do it? Well, nobody that no, because they, they, they were, this is the thing that's insane. The reporters don't even want to question that. And it's the, the, for, it's the only time the palace has got it wrong because uh, they published, um, the queen published, the queen's house published uh, uh, a communique saying that, you know, Meghan was in labor at 520 in the morning. And then it turns out that Harry goes at midday and says, oh, no, she gave birth birth at 520 and then we see harry and spare said that Meghan markle driven back and forth to the hospital in england it, i mean each way is 40 minutes she went drove they drove 40 minutes uh she gave she got uh she bounced she humped a ball then she got put in a bathtub then she got an epidural and then the baby was delivered and then they went back home so all of that happened within two hours and on top of that he ordered nando's at three o'clock in the morning when nando's is closed so the only living person who was there who has any account of that is 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 harry which doesn't make sense because you don't go Meghan Markle basically deliver a baby, driving including, within two hours, driving back and forth and with an epidural, which no doctor on earth are gonna, is gonna let you go like that. I mean, you, you, you've had, you know, you just had a kid, Sean, you know, Ziggy. That's oh, we, could, we um, Jen couldn't get out of the hospital for days. There was all kinds of checks and 
all kinds of protocol bureaucracy that we had to go through. Jen was in there for two days before they discharged her. Yeah, and Megan is what's considered a geriatric pregnancy. So for us, I mean, I, I, for me, I don't like to talk about children, but for me as a Canadian and for anybody, because I don't, you know this, Auntie, that Harry is in the line of succession and both kids are in the line of succession and both kids are in senior line of succession because actually uh, Harry, that idiot, is fifth in line to the throne and is part, it can be a regent in case something happened, God forbid. And then uh, Archie's sixth in line to the throne. And Lily is seventh in line to the throne, you know, and it's like, yeah, go what, ahead. Wasn't there, and I'm, I'm just, I'm going to probably forget, but I remember, I thought there was some scandal about Archie's birth certificate because Megan had been listed like as Rachel Megan or something like that. And then they changed it to princess or something. Wasn't that his birth certificate? Yeah, but that's the, that's not the easel. You see, the easel that they put outside the palace has the names. Oh. It's basically the doctors saying with the signatures that this child was delivered and we were the witnesses of that. Everybody has had him. The queen, uh, Princess Anne, um, the Duchess, uh, well, the Duchess of Edinburgh now, Sophie, even Beatrice, you, everybody. The only one who's never had that easel with a doctor's signature testifying that the child was born on that day and came from Meghan's Markle body, it's Meghan Markle. None of the doctors, there. we don't know which doctors or what. She refused to have the king, the queen's uh, doctors, which is really weird. They're the best in the world. Uh, we don't know to this day who was the doctors. The doctors that she named, one of them put out a tweet saying we were away on vacation. The other doctor didn't have any privileges at that hospital. And I don't know if you remember on Netflix, she said something like, oh, we didn't want to do it at the Portland because we didn't want to block the emergency. And, and there's no emergency room at the Portland Hospital. So um, it's it, this is why we've been talking about it, because those kids, it's not about the kids themselves. It's the fact that the documentation that would um, legitimize their, 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 their place in a line of succession is not present at all. You know, and, and people, you, you get the birth certificate, yeah, for example. That's crazy. They, yeah, the TMZ, but first they posted that thing, which was insane. They put, they put Harry as the Duke of Sussex, his royal highness, his last name. And the TMZ um, birth certificate that they produced was 10 days after Lilibet's birthday, which is insane because you know that it takes about six to eight weeks for the register to get it from the hospital to make it public. So it is it is this is why you know we, we, we've been asking you know because we hope you've heard something because um it is insane and in people saying this is why the surrogate thing comes a lot into play people say oh, i believe that she didn't give birth to them i believe the kids are real but i don't i don't believe that and you know and we always think that those kids are have very dysfunctional parents and harry and megan two narcissists you know who are never there so but i mean, I mean it's um, true I mean, I believe I believe that the kids are real. I believe the kids are real. Um, I've never really focused on the the birth certificate stuff. I mean, it's that is, I mean, obviously you guys have dug into it quite a lot, but I just I've never really focused on the the birth certificate stuff. I that is crazy that you know Archie was the only one without the the easel and everything. That, that Archie and the strange, um, for sure. Yeah, and the, and they got their but, wrong. But again, little. Like if they're born in the, yeah, I, I, I don't know enough about it. You know, I feel like I know a lot about a lot of stuff, but I don't know enough about the, the kids, <laughs> the, the birth certificate stuff. We've got a question from another viewer here from six pixie sticks. Has NT seen the Royal Griff Solarius animated Zirconia series? And is it an unspoken Hollywood consensus that South Park nailed the gruesome twosome with the privacy tour send up. We, the people, are eagerly awaiting the sequel. I mean, I think that um, definitely, I think that they got it down. Um, I think it's hilarious. And I think that the fact that they were all upset about it all the time um, is just crazy. I, I, why are you going to fight with South Park? You know, it just, it's, I think Lindsay Lohan once tried to fight with South Park. Just, you know, embrace it. The, embrace the fact that South Park thought you were worthy enough to to do something like that, and just laugh it off. And I, they have very thin skin for for being, you know, you know, in in the public eye and stuff. And and that's, 
I guess that kind of goes back to what you were asking at the very beginning is like some celebrities, they just let it roll off the backs and they don't care. And, and then others are just every little thing. Oh no, no, you know, you can't say this and they'll come after you. And, um, and, and I just, why you can't be a celebrity and then not expect people to take, you know, shots at you basically, or call you out for stuff. Or if they find something that, that you do and, something that you've been hypocritical about, of course, they're going to do something. So I, I find all the, the short stuff very funny. We've got a question from Sage M. Will NT spill the tea on what other celebrities really think about Megan in Hollywood? What is the general consensus on this woman? And are companies interested in sponsoring her for her Instagram? Thanks. Um, I think that... Well, I, you know, explain with the Grammy Award, that was an opportunity for celebrities to acknowledge, her, you know, Harry, at least they didn't do that. I, I feel like she's using the WME thing, a, a way a lot of these parties work. And, you know, let's say um, Leonardo DiCaprio has a party or somebody and whatever there was CAA or WME. And what they want is they want to have other CAA people, WME people, and they like throw them together. So if you have some kind of Kevin Costner event or something like that, they'll say, hey, you know what? We're trying to get a profile here on Meghan and Harry because we're trying to do something. So we're just going to send them along. And, you know, they brought a publicist to the party, which is strange. You don't bring a publicist to just like a party like that. So I think that Hollywood appears to be tiring of them. I think that that's why she's trying to interject herself at concerts where she can get photos with other famous people. And that's the, basically the, the only way that she can do it. I think that you're going to start seeing her at premieres of big things. It wouldn't shock me at all. If you see her at the Academy Awards this year. Um, in fact, I would kind of bet on it that she was going to be at the Academy Awards. Um, not to present necessarily, although I think that's probably what the re that she would want to go if she was presenting or some kind of um, humanitarian award at you know the the week before an Oscar event, something like that, where she gets to surround herself with other A-listers that she can take photos with and hobnob, so it looks like that she's beloved. But I, I, I don't see that she is. The people that she's hanging out with are not A-listers. The people that she's hanging out with are not celebrities. And I think that they feel that maybe she has bought her way in rather than earned her way in. And there's a big difference. You know, if you look at groups of actors and stuff, if you look at, say, like Adam Sandler and his whole group and how they started kind of at the bottom and they worked their way up. And now, you know, they control a huge section of Netflix, but they've always stayed together. If you look at like the Seth Rogen kind of group and how they've always kind of stayed together and they they do things. If you look at like Judd Apatow and all that, they've kind of always they work their way up. Yes, there are Nepo babies, but it kind of feels like, hey, you didn't even put your own money in this. You got Netflix to do it. We wish that we could be some, you know, B plus list, you know, cable actress who gets this monster deal from Netflix. And I, I people like to see that you've earned it. And you really have to be some kind of special Nepo baby talent to to, you know, leap over that hurdle. And it doesn't always work. Anything to add, Paula? Well, I just want to say something because I, I actually thought about it when, when we ended the interview the last time. You said that how Megan, we, we discussed how much of a narcissist this woman is, how she lives with it, how she can't live without being out in, you know, like two, three days without putting an article outside, you know. Why, if she's like that, why hasn't she put up her Instagram account? Because I'm sure this woman must have like a dozen accounts where that she trolls the internet with. Why doesn't she just put up her social media <laughs> I mean, really, for reals. I mean, why doesn't she just put that bloody Instagram app and X account? Why doesn't she do that? Is it because she wants to be Sussex Royal because she's still angry that she didn't get to use that word or what? Why doesn't she do it? Okay, here's why. Because she's got WME now. I think that if she didn't have WME, that you would have already seen the TIG make a return. <laughs> I think that you would have seen her do like a goop type situation. I think that you would see her on social media doing endorsement deals and things like that. But WME is probably saying, look, you can't, you know, 
and I'm just, she would never do this, but like you can't cheapen your brand by doing something like waist trainer tea or something like that. You have to actually, you know, have some kind of well thought out endorsement kind of thing. If you're going to re, you know, boot the TIG, you need to have it, you know, complementary to whatever brand that we're thinking of having. And I think that if she had not got with WME, that you would have seen her do these kind of things. And it would have just even further, you know, tarnished this image that they wanted the world to believe, oh, we're going to go off to Africa. We're going to do good work over there. We don't really care about being in the spotlight, blah, 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 blah. And then when you're like, just, hey, you want to have uh, an ad on here for, you know, a hundred grand, then this is the place to be. And that's not what WME would ever want for any of their clients. So I, I agree with you, Paula. I think that she would have come back with social media because she enjoys that attention. She enjoys seeing those likes. She enjoys seeing, you know, the feedback that she would make sure is all positive because they would curate it. And WME is probably like, eh, that's not really the best idea. If you really want to get that Dior deal worth $10 million, you know, you going on there, um, advertising for skims is probably not the way to go. Because Kim Kardashian has her Instagram account, but she she just signed up with the N NBA, right? A, a million dollars thing for to to represent or something like that to sponsor the NBA. I don't know what it is, but I'm surprised that WME wouldn't encourage that because you know that's big money nowadays. You know, celebrities with with sponsorship. I mean, Kim Kardashian gets like what a million dollar per per post or something like that. I'm surprised, you know, it's because she hasn't been able to yes. nail any brands. But here's the thing. Kim Kardashian makes a lot of money. Yes. But Meghan Markle's not Kim Kardashian. Meghan Markle doesn't want to be seen as a Kim Kardashian. Yes, her mom hangs out with the Kardashians and stuff, but that's not where she wants to be. I could see her doing a partnership. Like, let's say Kim and, and the guy that, that founded Skims together. Let's say they decided they, they were going to start a new company. And I could see Meghan wanting to be involved in something like that, where it's a new company, but she doesn't. Kim is just, hey, if you got the money, I will go ahead and I will post it. I don't care. I'm just all about the money. And that's not necessarily, you know, Kim's brand is about making money. Kim's is just, let me get whatever I can as much as I can. And as much as I have, you know, said bad things about Kim Kardashian over the years and probably will continue to do so, I have never, ever said that she is not a hard worker. And she yeah. works and she hustles. And, you know, she is lucky that she's not in jail. She stole 300 and something thousand dollars from Brandy's that's mom true, and credit true. card fraud. And instead of, you know, instead, instead of, yeah, instead of, you know, going to jail, which every other person would do, they made a deal and they said, how about this? We'll make a sex tape and we'll, we'll get the money from the sex tape and we'll pay you back. And she managed to take a sex tape. Well, actually, she managed to take a potential conviction for stealing from a credit card to making, you know, to being almost a billionaire. So. <laughs> You do not accomplish that without working your butt off. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I, I've been shocked. I, I, when I saw that, that it, it, it was the sister. She was the, um, the closet person that arranged the closet, right? Something like that for the sister of the guy whom she did the sex tape with, right? And uh, and, and she stole her and Khloe yeah. Kardashian were using her credit card like there was <laughs> tomorrow was going to end or something like that. I'm shocked. Yeah, but, you know... <laughs> I've seen your, your blind items about her. <laughs> <laughs> but that, and I just, for me, I, I want to wrap it up with this because I don't want to take too much of your time. But do you see Meghan Markle? Because a, a story just came out. I don't know. I guess she put it out. That um, Meghan Markle and Harry were definitely invited to Sandringham for Christmas. Do you see her ever going back to the UK if everything else fails? No. Do you? I, I, no, she's burned her bridges. She can't. If she goes to England, she can't be in L.A. She can't be in Montecito. She has no chance of being with A-listers and everything. I, even if even if her movie career goes to, to hell, she's not going to go back to England. There, there's nothing in it for her in England. Um, the British press don't like her. Um, and they will just constantly be after her. They will publish photos that are unflattering constantly. I don't think she'll, I don't think she ever wants to step foot in England again. I'm sure that she'll have to on a, on occasion, maybe every three or four years, or, you know, maybe if when, you know, Charles dies or, you know, William gets the, to become the king or whatever, but 
it is going to be so far in between when she's there. Mm, wow. And she and she might bump into Piers Morgan. You got a <laughs> you got a question from Karen yes. Silvestri. Where was Doria and why can't anyone talk about it? <sighs> you know, I've I've had my theories that, you know, that she was you know, in jail. Um that was kind of my thing. I think that that's if you go back and you look at you know Dory and her husband, I, I did a whole episode on it, and I'm I'm not. It's been so long since I did it, but I broke down everything and like him um, winning the lottery or maybe fixing the lottery or whatever. It just I, that's always been my thing is that I assumed that she was in jail, and that's why you know they don't talk about it because again that would kind of ruin the brand. But that's always been my my understanding actually there is uh two two records court records in in california with doria raglan and with her details one of them is actually a misdemeanor something about tax that she didn't pay and then she paid it and you know it's something like a fine thing but the other one is sealed and i even tried to get one of my my cousins who's a sheriff in the westwood police department and he said you know pat well he calls me patty he goes patty i even i can't conceal that you know so i don't know what she's done but you know hell at them you know she, it's it's sealed so i wonder what that is and who sealed it so basically what i you know dug up back then mm -hmm. and it's really interesting because um the the california lottery it started like in 1984 and Thomas Markle played the lottery constantly, like spent thousands upon thousands of dollars. And he won the lottery. He won like $750,000. And he supposedly, it was a combination, it was a five number thing. And it included Megan's birth date of August 4th, 1981. And, and Megan was in elementary school at the time. And Thomas's story has always been that he planned to partially use the prize money to pay for Megan's private school tuition. But um, the thing is, is that Tom Jr. once said that, you know, dad called me one day, told me to come over and there was like a, a lump on his bed under a blanket and it, there was stacks of money there. And his dad said, well, you know, I, I won the lottery. And I, that's kind of the, the story has been that Thomas's win was kind of an inside job that he and Doria had cooked up that basically they had worked at like she had worked at a, a television studio, right? She worked at General Hospital and she worked at on top yeah. of the heap. And basically there was a this television studio that conducted and filmed the lottery drawings and something like that, because this is a lot different. This is, you know, the lottery today is not the lottery then. And back then, the California lottery, that five digit thing, they had a ton of technical issues in 1990, yeah. a ton. And so basically they also said that he hid his win from Doria um, <laughs> because there was like divorce and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, that's kind of, you know, where it was. And, and Doria and Thomas weren't really to, together very much at that point. But then what happened was there was this, this business and supposedly Doria, like there's IRS and that she got, you know, four years in prison for financial fraud and stuff. I don't know. I mean, I, I went over it like on a whole episode, every little theory about it. So it's it's it was really it was really interesting to to dig deep into the whole Doria thing. And I but I did that episode like three years ago, maybe almost four years ago. Question from Poppy here. What what does NT know about Marcus Anderson's long friendship with Meg? That's disgusting. Um you know it just basically, I mean, he's he's the guy, right? I mean, he's Megan's best friend, and and maybe he's the guy that um did a little introduction. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I've done episodes about him. He's there's a whole series that I did on the Soho House, and then if you go back and you look, um, Thomas Burkle basically had this relationship um way back in the day with also the lotto and stuff and so it kind of goes back to that but marcus the soho house is oh god i don't want to get sued the soho house 
is known <laughs> for making connections. It, it is a place where, you know, you can, you can meet people and uh, arrange for some, you know, uh, you know, it's a private club and there's wealthy single, you know, not wealthy single women, um, single women that perhaps are Instagram models and things like that. And you meet at Soho and there's Soho's around the world. And so, you know, oh, why don't you go to the Soho house in this country or this country in this country? And Marcus and Megan being very good friends, you would say, hey, I think it would be a really good idea if you went to the Soho house in this country on this day. And perhaps you will meet somebody there. Yeah. So I, you know, Marcus is a very, very important connection in all of that. And the Soho house, I, I think because Megan's getting more and more removed from Soho house. Oh, the really? People don't talk about it enough and what went on. And so, I mean, maybe, you, maybe people do. I mean, it's, I feel like I talked about it years ago and that because I was talking about it years ago, that maybe people don't talk about it anymore and what Megan was doing at Soho house. Yeah. It's just that people, you know, you know, Andy, how things are with the news outlet night nowadays that like a week old news is like years ago, you know? And, and it's like, if you, yeah. I'm sure that if you bring up what your, the, your Doria, if you didn't, if you did the same episode about Doria right now that you did four years ago, people are going to go, oh, did you see that, that the video about Andy that he did this and blah, 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 because they, <laughs> They for not really. They've forgotten about it that you did it four years ago. You know, it's like the new cycle with internet is it's it's incre it's it's insane. I think you know. So it's uh I don't let go of it because there's some. I mean, Tom Bauer said in his book that Doria allegedly was a drug pusher or something like that. And on the set of um, what's it called, The Days of Our Lives or what was it, One Life to Live? I don't know. One of those soap operas that General that, Hospital, General Hospital, yeah, General Hospital. And I mean, Tom Bauer hasn't been sued. That's for sure. Yeah. So True. two more questions left from viewers. And do you have time to answer those? Sure. So the first one is, do you believe everyone in America is fed up with Oprah because of her interview with Meghan and Harry? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, I don't think they're fed up with Oprah because of Meghan and Harry. I think they're fed up with Oprah because she's Oprah. And it just kind of, I, she, you know, and there's going to be, People are going to be talking because what's going to happen is, you know, the color purple is going to come out again um, yeah. what, on Christmas Day. And we are going to get back into the whole feud that she had with Whoopi Goldberg and how they hate each other and stuff like that. And that is just going to be front and center. They're, they're going to it's going to overshadow the the acting from Fantasia Barino. It's going to, you know, overlook the fact that there are going to be two Academy Award winners from the same season of American Idol. It's just yeah. everybody's going to talk about Oprah and Whoopi and Oprah hasn't helped herself because of this whole Ozempic, Ozempic thing. Uh -huh. And one note to everybody, if a celebrity says they're not on Ozempic, that's probably true. They're probably on some it's well, Gori is the actual pro, you know, the, the ingredient or whatever, Rogovi. And, you know, so they're probably not on Ozempic, but they're on a weekly weight loss shot. So reporters from now on should ask, are you taking a weekly weight loss shot to help you lose weight? rather than asking about Ozempic. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think that people are fed up with, with Oprah and I think that they're, they, you know, that she was lying to them. I think that she didn't help herself when she did the whole Maui thing with the rock. You guys are worth billions of dollars and you're yeah. asking everybody to chip in five bucks. Why don't you just write a check for $25 million? Cause you're not going to raise more than that from every little person across the country. So just write the check instead of, you know, asking. And then how come, you know, are you going to end up buying all this land that has now been burned and the people are going to do it? You know, you got Mark Zuckerberg on one of the islands right now who's employing hundreds of people building some massive compound that's like almost two miles around. And yeah. what is he doing? Everybody thinks he's preparing for the end of the world. Um, <laughs> so it's just I think everybody was already tired of Oprah. And this is just she's going to be front and center for the next three or four weeks all the way, maybe up through the Academy Awards. Interesting. Thanks for the question, Stacy. And the final question from viewers is from the aftermath. Does NT think if Charles lets them back in after all they have done, it would mean a sacrifice of his own reign? Would the public ever forgive him? I don't think anybody needs to worry about that because they're not going to both come back in. <laughs> it's going to be hairy or nobody 
And I don't know. I, I think that if if Charles like embraced Megan and after everything that's been done and everything that she leaked to Omid and everything about, you know, him being, you know, one of the quote unquote racist or whatever, I think, yeah, I think it would destroy him. But I don't think she's ever going to come back. So I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. I do think that at some point, like I said, Harry and Meghan are going to break up or, you know, choose to live separate lives or whatever it is. And, you know, he's going to be there. And don't forget, the family is not exactly, you know, there has been a messy divorce in the past. So it's not like you can't, you know, handle another messy divorce. And I think that Harry eventually is going to make his way back to England. And, you know, he called it what a week ago. He goes, that's my home. You know, he didn't say California was his home. He didn't say, you know, the United States was his home. He said, you know, England, the UK is his home. And I think he wants to go home. So, but I don't think it's going to be both of them. I think it's just going to be him. Mm. Thank you. Any closing comments, Paula? No, I mean, I love your channel. I love, I, I follow you religiously. All my, all my, you know, my, it was one of my biggest view things. And, you know, um, I just wanted to say, because I talked to Kinsey after I talked to you, you know, it's like, oh my God. Because um, I, I, I'm so glad that you came. I want to thank you. But I mean, everything you said is spot on. Uh, everything about Dory, I think you should bring that up again. That, that interview just refresh people's memories because people don't know you've done this in spite of the fact that they follow you. You know, because um, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff there. And thank you for being here. Thank, thanks for coming, and the I'm such a big fan. I'm fan girling. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a very soothing voice, Auntie. Something about it. <laughs> yes, it is, it is. I appreciate but, that. Um, I'm gonna have to have you come on my show sometime, Sean, so we can talk about like uh, your history and everything. Because I think that I think that everybody would find it fascinating, and I'd love to to sit down and talk to you about it for for 45 minutes or an hour someday yeah i'd love to anytime you should let me know and please let the viewers know where they can find you and support you online so i'm at nt lawyer on all social media and then um crazy days and nights .net is the blog and then patreon.com slash nt lawyer where i try to post an episode every single day um try <laughs> <laughs> All of Enti's links are in the description box below this video. If you're watching it on YouTube, you've seen Paula. She's a regular on the Royal Mess with Ron Swanson Friday night. Paula, where the, can the viewers find and support you? As usually, Paula M channel. You know, I have my TikTok, but TikTok, I, I, I mean, I have over 80,000 subscribers there, but but I do mostly on YouTube because TikTok is such censorship. It's worse than YouTube. So, but um, but yeah, just find me on Paula M channel, and you know, on Fridays we, we do on we appear on Sean Atwood's channel, uh, the, the Royal Mess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as me, viewers. Let us know in the comments what you think. We will see you next time. Much love and respect from London. Take care wherever you are in the world. Cheers.